Welcome back to The Art of Transformers, a mini-series that takes a look at the history and eccentricities of the original Generation 1 Transformers character designs. Last episode we discussed how, when creating the designs for the Transformers animated series, Marvel Productions artist Flor O'Deary started out by simply revising designs created by artist Shohei Kohara for the original Transformers toy and comic commercials. But for the other characters from the 1984 product line who hadn't appeared in those commercials, he had to start from scratch. For many of the characters, that meant simply looking at the toy and translating it into a character design that matched the Kohara-derived aesthetic of the already established designs. Broad, stocky toys became taller, leaner figures with more human proportions and faces, and a minimal number of visible vehicle parts. The need to fit within this aesthetic saw some designs altered more drastically than others. The Autobot mini-vehicles all lost their various claw arms and blank sci-fi robot faceplates in favour of more human features. As did the Decepticon Viewfinder, whose design was used as the basis for all three components of Reflector, with Spyglass and Spectro's unique toy designs being totally abandoned. Only a small step up from that, Ironhide and Ratchet squat hunchback toys with their heads recessed inside their chests bear almost no resemblance to their finished character designs. Now you can see here that, barring a few cosmetic differences, Ratchet and Ironhide are basically identical, having been designed side by side. But compare that to Prowl and Blue Streak. Like Ratchet and Ironhide, their toys are identical, but Prowl's character design was one of those created for the commercials, while Blue Streak's was created separately, later, along with the rest of the cartoon cast. The result is that, despite their identical starting points, they each have completely different character models. Blue Streak's includes the toy shoulder-mounted missile launchers missing from Prowl's, and interprets many of the toy's details in totally different ways. It's especially noticeable in their heads. Prowl's forehead ornamentation is a flat crest that points upwards, but Blue Streak's takes the form of a pair of chunky horns that curve outward towards the viewer. Now, for certain characters, Deary did have one piece of reference material besides the toys themselves. As you likely know, the first-year Transformers toys were originally created by Japanese toy company Takara and released between 1982 and 1983 in two separate toy lines, Diaclone and Microchange, before being imported and rebranded by Hasbro. Of the 28 characters released by Hasbro in 1984, Takara had already created painted illustrations for about half of them for their Diaclone and Microchange toy packaging. Hasbro reused all this artwork for the Transformers line, and Deary had access to it during the design phase. And if you look close, the influence of this art on the character designs for certain members of the 1984 cast can be easily spotted. Ravage is one of the most obvious. His character design sheet is basically copied directly from his microchange package art, posed mid-pounce. A lot of comics, colouring books, and other pieces of media would often directly recreate this drawing. Wheeljax also posed just like his package art, with his arms in that strange doing the monkey pose, instead of at his sides like you'd expect from a model sheet. Also, you see those triangular markings on the inside of his leg? Well, those aren't on the toy. They've been copied directly from Takara's artwork. Hound's pose is also copied from the Takara artwork, but the bigger tail here is his gun. The weapon that comes with the Hound toy is a long, slender rifle, but when translating the Takara artwork into a character model, Deary misinterpreted the way the art had foreshortened the rifle and drew it as being short and chunky, which was how it would look all through the cartoon. Trailbreaker in particular is a real mess. His toy comes with a radar scanner accessory that plugs into the back of his head, and missiles that can be swapped out for his fists or stored in his shoulders. In adapting the Takara art, Deary chose to omit the missiles, and further, misread the art so badly that he thought the scanner was part of Trailbreaker's helmet, and hence drew Trailbreaker with a square, flat-topped box of a head. You see how what's supposed to be the peak of his helmet gets turned into a detail on his forehead? 
The design was later revised to add the missing accessories, but it's obvious that only incomprehensive images of the toy, rather than a physical sample of the figure, were used for reference. The scanner was restored, but wound up attached to a made-up antenna on his left shoulder, while a missile became reinterpreted as a shoulder cannon on his right, mistakes that couldn't have been made with a physical toy to reference. These images also obviously must have had a missile inserted in place of Trailbreaker's left fist, as his final design modifies him to have only one hand, reinterpreting the missile as a permanent built-in gun barrel. In the first two episodes of the series, though, Trailbreaker appears in a hybrid of these two designs, with his shoulder accessories and two fists. Sunstreaker's toy also has missiles that can be swapped for fists, but the reference material Deary had to work with mustn't have shown this, because the character got to keep both his hands. Hasbro also commissioned the production of new, similarly styled pieces of package art for the characters that Takara hadn't produced any for, but it's unclear if the hectic production schedule of the toy line and cartoon meant that any of these were done in time to be available to Deary. Just recently, this absolutely bizarre early design for Mirage was uncovered that bears only the loosest resemblance to his toy. Deary definitely wasn't referencing the new artwork when he made this. Lastly, speaking of Mirage, check out his final design. It was initially drawn with the toy's sponsor logo on its side, but this was erased for the finished cartoon. Good thing too, because you see how the letters on his legs and arms are in the same orientation? Well, Mirage rotates at the waist when he transforms, meaning that, as you can see from his toy, the letters on his legs should have been upside down. And that's it for episode 2. Y'all seem to like episode 1, so I guess this is a show now. Next time, keeping it chronological, I'll be looking at the new characters introduced in season 1 of the animated series. In the meantime, click like, click subscribe, and if you can, please consider visiting Patreon to support the channel.